So in this file, I have a simple electric with a bunch of random symbols on it, some 19s, some 5s, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They all have some dummy data like channel numbers and unit numbers and circuit numbers. My pipe is about 20 foot long, and they're somewhat evenly spaced with a couple of random spacings in there as well. So I'm going to pop over to my other document for a second. In this document, I have a dimension tape as well as a bunch of lines that I've placed every 18 inches or so, and that's just a simple line that has been duplicated in an array off to the side. But I can create this by going to my dimension tools and then dimension tape, kind of drawing a uh, line as long as you need your tape to be. And then within that, you can play around inside your object info palette to get all kinds of different settings. So for example, in my tape, uh, it's very long. I have a tick every one inch, a major tick every foot. And then again, those 18 inch lines are just lines that I've manually arrayed. So from here, I'm going to go back to my original plot document and grab everything. In this case, including the position just for reference. I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it over inside my document. Essentially what you see here is that I have a full size position kind of on top of this little tiny measuring tape. I have to make a choice now if I'm going to align it to center or align it off to the side. It's gonna be different depending on what kind of position you're using, pipe or truss or whatever. I'm gonna to choose to do it off to the side for today's demo. I'm gonna delete the position itself because I don't need that anymore. And now I'm left with my symbols. And of course they have all their information on them. And now all I have to do is change the symbol itself to be something that I've made that fits on the tape. So if you go in the resource browser, you can see I've made this symbol called hang card. And if I take a look at it real quick, it's basically a little two inch tall box that has uh, labels for all of the various fields that are in my label legend. Of course, then it has an accompanying label legend that fits on top of that that I call hang tape. If we look at that one, you can see I've got all my various fields overlaid on top of that symbol. So just like you would use a lighting symbol uh, with all of the various things laid out in a label legend, it's really just the same thing. I'm going to grab my lights all at the same time, and in my object info palette, I'm going to change the symbol name to hang card, because that's the name of the symbol. And you can see they're still using their old legend, so I'm going to change that over to hang tape. And boom, now all of the information is there, and the, the spacing has all been maintained because all I've done is changed the symbol type. As long as your insertion points from your original symbols that you copied in are all at the center of your fixture and the insertion point for the custom symbol you made is on the crosshair or wherever you want the light to line up, the spacing will remain the same. And now I'm gonna grab all of those things and I'm going to simply move them up onto my number tape that I made. And you can see there's all the information there. I've got the unit number, I've got the circuit number. And of course you can make this look however you want. This is just how it works for me. But now I have a hang tape that is the length of my electric in a one-to-one -one scale with the correct spacing for all of my various fixtures pulled directly in from my plot. And then the last thing to do is to print it. So I'm gonna to go to my page setup. I'm going to make a page size that matches whatever label printer I'm using. It can be as long or as short as it needs to be. I should have this narrow strip of paper that is showing up as my page, just like you would in any other uh, kind of page setup that you would do. I'm gonna move it over to be on the zero, I could also offset it a little bit to the left if I wanted to have a little bit of white space off to the side, but that's it. I can now print this as a PDF. I could print this as uh, just directly to my printer and it would print one-to-one -one scale, um, however long my electric is with all of my fixtures on it. In terms of how your label printer will work, you'll want to consult the documentation for that printer itself because they're all a little bit different. I like to make the page size be exactly the length of the electric that I'm printing or the truss that I'm printing, but your mileage may vary. And that's it. It really is that simple. Hope this was helpful.